existing to the bench. I think the statement for now is sufficient, and in any case, again, tomorrow we will continue to raise these issues. I had another statement that I wanted to issue to the press after this formal press statement, and this relates to an issue that has gone viral in our social uh, platforms starting this morning. I was elated by some colleagues who were receiving these um, viral uh, statements which was attributed to myself. Apparently I'm told it's a, a recording, a recording of my conversation which I had with one Honorable JJ uh, sometime late last month. I must state on the onset that my visit to Honorable JJ, who was at the time a patient within one of our public health facilities, being my Nasoko Hospital, uh, and I also must state that at the time when uh, Mr. J.J. Banda was in Minosoko Hospital, I apparently was also a patient in the same hospital. I was in the hospital for 10 days, almost 10 days, and during that whole period, I did not know that J.J. had been in the same hospital. And what was interesting later was to find that he was not just in the same hospital, he was almost next door to my hospital. Because even the people who visited me, nobody ever mentioned to me that JJ was in the hospital. On the day I was being discharged, the superintendent, the commandant, the superintendent in that hospital informed me that we had two VIPs in the hospital. One, the chief, whom I was told that he or she was being discharged on the same day, had been discharged, but was still in her room. And secondly, a member of parliament by the name of Honorable J.J. Banda was also in the same hospital and next to me. And uh, I said, wow, how come I was not told about, you know, somebody being next door to me? They said, well, in fact, he had asked that he had wanted you to see him or that he should see you. But obviously your condition was not possible. But I'm sure today when you are going out, you may use this opportunity to visit him. I said, fine. It is part of my duty as Minister of Health. But I'll start with the chief. So after checking out of the room, I first went, because both of them were on the same floor with me, I first went to the chief who was on the floor, same floor, had visited, paid a ketesiko, greeted. After that, I then proceeded now to leave the hospital. And at the time when I was leaving the hospital, I was not alone. I had some of my family members who were escorting me out. I also had some officials from the Ministry of Health who were also escorting me out. I also had officials from within the hospital led by the senior superintendent himself. And I, I was led to JJ's um, room. There was uh, no phones. I even said, ah, the day I was going to the theater, I passed through this, I saw these no phones, but I didn't even, I was wondering what no phones. I said, well, why am I allowing phones for myself? I think this patient needs peace. I didn't really check, pay attention. So anyway, we went into that room and I was not alone, we're a big crowd. And when we went to visit uh, JJ, um, we found that he was with his family members, in particular his wife was introduced and a brother was also introduced to me. I greeted them and greeted JJ, who by the way, have a lot of experiences with JJ myself and I know JJ better than people may think. But he's an honorable member of parliament, he's a colleague, and for me he's even like a son. And as minister, I went and sat next to him to say, I didn't know you were here, what's the problem? And he tried to explain, he seemed like he was in pain. And I listened very attentively. At some point, JJ asked that people should leave us.
that he wanted to speak to me. At this point in time, everybody who had come with me was made to go out, but of course his members of the family remained there. And I had this conversation, listening to him, you know, making a presentation to me. I left the hospital that day, and I told him I was going to come back on a Monday uh, because he had wanted, he had asked me to do him a favor. So I told him I'll come back on Monday. But on Monday, I didn't go back because my appointment to go back for review was on Wednesday. So I thought, ah, I'll see him on Wednesday. I can't go now. I'm still not feeling well. Let me just go there on Wednesday. And between Monday and Wednesday, I saw a missed call. I think I only saw it the following day, I think on a Tuesday in the evenings. I think I saw the number and recognized the number because it says this is JJ's wife and say please want to speak to you. Of course I knew that uh, he wanted a response to what he had asked me to. So I thought oh, I'm going there tomorrow, I'll talk to him tomorrow. So the following day when I went to the, when I went to the hospital, it was for a specific a review for myself and the doctors were already waiting. And on my arrival there, I was met by the commandant, who is this superintendent, and others to receive me and to take me to the, to the review place, doctors. I was also supposed to see dentists on in addition. So I, then they said, no, 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 minister, you, we think would like you to see JJ because he has been asking for you. So I said, but I'm already late for my appointment. Why don't I see the doctor? before seeing him. I'll see him. In any case, I'd already said I was going to see him. They said, no, he's not in a good state. He has not eaten. So we believe if you see him, he'll be better. Because we saw last time when you visited him, he had brightened up. He has respect for you. You're his mother. I said, no problem. I'll see him. Let me go for my... They said, no. They insisted. Because of that insistence, I said, okay, then tell the other doctor that it's you who have delayed me, not myself. So that I see him, and then I can come for my appointment. So it was agreed. And we went upstairs, because my appointment was downstairs, to his room. On arrival there, when I entered, I found he had visitors, including his family members. And of course, when they saw me, they excused themselves. But of course, the same people that were with me in the previous meeting, uh, when I met him, the family, they were still there. But then I noticed that JJ was telling the family that not even you now, leave. I was a bit worried. I didn't understand why his family should leave because there was nothing much really that, there was no secret in my view. So I led everybody out because we're now just the three of us, myself, the brother, JJ's brother and JJ's wife. I led them out, but I said to the wife, I think you come back. I cannot stay with him, just the two of us. There's really nothing much, so you stay. So she said, well, since he doesn't want me to be there, I'll stand inside, but by the door. So she actually came inside, but near the door. And I went to JJ, and of course, we had a conversation. So, I'm very disappointed, really extremely disappointed, that a conversation that I had with JJ could be recorded. It is criminal to record a person without their permission. What was the objective? What was the motive? To use me to cleanse themselves or what? To send a wrong narrative, to fit into their narrative that this is sponsored by government and to insinuate that I would coerce him. Coerce him for what? To say what? I didn't invite myself into JJ's room. I was called. And so, I want to state that I have reported this criminal action of, re of recording me. I think it's high time people who record people should understand that it is against the laws of this country to record a person in such a manner and then use that recording to mislead the country and to make it look like there is some motives. What motives would I have myself against JJ? His story of the so-called abduction. For me, it doesn't even make any sense. And like I said to him, even when I got that story, I just told him, you are young, you have a future. You are not like us who have reached the evening. 
do not allow yourself to be used by senior politicians because you'll be the one to lose in the end. And I think I'm right. I was right. Even before the voice is, is gone, my voice to him, I'm sure today he'll realize what I told him. That you are being used. How would someone record me? Let alone begin to use that record. I visited him in good faith as his minister. And indeed as his mother. He's a patient. And I always do that. Because I have an obligation. But I was very disappointed. And so, like I've said, I've reported this matter to the police. I'd like to get to the bottom of this recording. And I hope that the police can be professional in dealing with JJ's abduction and also in dealing with this so-called recording of what I might have said on time. So I just thought I'd make this statement. Thank you very much.